and I think the new job deserves uh, a new version of me, and I want to be that new version. All right, we're here with Tony Grinston. I'm allowed to call him Tony. He gave me permission. Sergeant Major of the Army retired, Tony Grinston. It's a pleasure. Please tell everyone uh, what you're doing right now. Yeah, well, so far, I'm uh, the CEO for AER started in January. I started actually with Army Emergency Relief in November, so it's almost been a full year, so that just means I know enough to be dangerous. So I am, and I am the, the president, director, the CEO, so all things AER come through me, and I basically love what I do because I get to help soldiers, families, uh, when they're in financial need. That includes active, guard, and reserve over 30 days in Title 10 status. It Retirees and uh, surviving spouses. I love uh, that. It's great. So why AAR specifically? Just tell me about what what about their mission kind of uh, strikes a chord with you. It's a great purpose for me. It's just like I really was excited that I could find a purpose like I had in the Army. You know, you just spent 36 years doing something so great, protecting Americans, protecting the world sometimes. And then you can find another purpose where you can give back to soldiers and their families. And it's, it's a joy. I, it, it's hard work, it's frustrating. Sometimes we, we've actually coined a little phrase a little bit is like, I didn't know it was that hard to actually help people. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I really do love what I do. No, I could completely yeah, so. understand that. I'll, I'll tell you a little, a little story about my AR experience. The first time I used it, I was a brand new private uh, up in Alaska and my son needed a, an oral surgery that I obviously was not prepared for. I didn't know it was gonna happen. I went to the AR office and they were gonna give me a loan, uh, no interest loan, obviously. But then they said, hey, you know what? Hold on a second. And the young woman went in the back and she came back out. She said, we actually have a grant for you. And I was like, a grant? They said, yeah, we're gonna give you X amount of money and that's yours. Like just, you know, I obviously had to show receipts that I, that I paid the, the oral surgeon. How important are those grants to soldiers and their families that, that you've personally heard of or seen um, and how do we, how can we continue that kind of going forward? You know, for me, uh, grants are like joy. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I started since I've been the CEO once a month, I'll go work back in the assistance department. I'll pull up a case. I'll actually type it in. They all laugh at me because it takes forever. <laughs> like, can you get faster, Tony? And I say, but it, it's really great. And I, I said, if I worked back there, there would be a lot more grants because I just want <laughs> I just want to get money away. So, just hit enter on but what does it mean? Yeah. Um, and I get these cases. It, it's part a little sad. There was a domestic violence case. Mm. And uh, this woman had actually sent us a note on social media reaching mm. out and said, my husband is in a different location. The chain of command is not supporting me. All I want to do is get home. She says, I just need the money to get back to my family. And uh, that was a, uh, it was a grant. It's a $4,000 grant. Give her the plane tickets to get her family back to where she belonged. Um, so that's what I mean. You know, that's what really is important that we take care of not just the soldiers, but the families when they're in a really bad way. I feel like those are the stories that need to be told and not to elevate AER and say, look how great we are and stuff like that, but really to show people that you guys are literally just here to help. It doesn't matter who you are or what you are, or what your circumstances, if, if you fall under that umbrella of assistance that you guys are gonna provide it. Do you feel like that, those stories, do you feel like they don't get out as much? Yeah. And just think about that story. It doesn't actually put the Army in a good light, right? So right. we probably don't, you know, do we want to broadcast that right. as much because, you know, there was a soldier probably on the backside of that. And I don't try to take sides. And, and I ask all the AER not to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's just, that was a, a family member in need of assistance. Right or wrong, I don't know, but they really convinced me they needed help. <laughs> and they fall under the category that need any assistance, and that's what we need to do. We yeah. don't take a side. That's one of our family members that needs help, and we do that. And to getting that, some of that stuff out is it's challenging because people don't want to admit they needed help. Yeah, I can 100% agree with that because as a man, a father of four, uh, it's really hard to humble yourself and say, you know, I can't do this on my own, but the people I love are in danger or they're at risk of, you know, something, so I need some help. So I think we definitely need to spread that message of, it's okay to ask for help. I, I, I spoke at the Military Influencers Conference on the behalf of AAR, and I started off with a question I posed to the audience, and I said, when is it okay to ask for help? And, you know, I got a couple answers, but the, the real answer is just any time and all the time. It doesn't matter. It really, honestly, doesn't matter. So 
I appreciate what you guys do and everything that AER stands for and the work, the hard work that you've put in and the community that, that you've kind of built um, in, the, in the recent past. I think that's awesome. But let me ask you a question. So, you, you know, you transitioned from being the sergeant major of the Army, the most enlisted, you're the big guy, you're the top dog, <laughs> right? <laughs> what was that like going from that person to now Tony Grinston and people calling you Tony and you getting used to saying, hey, my name's Tony, not, hey, I'm, I'm in charge of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, technically, I'm not sure I ever said, hey, I'm Sergeant Major Army, yeah. I'm in charge of you. Uh, um, I really like it. And I've always talked about identities. You know, if you ever met me as Sergeant Major Army, you'd be like, what do we call you? I said, well, uh, Alexander's husband or Sophia and Isabella's dad. Yeah. Uh, those are my favorite two titles. Um, yeah. But I like it when people call me Tony. And I will say this. Some people, when they call me Sergeant Major, they're trying to put me in a box I don't want to be in. Mm. I want to be the best CEO that AER has ever seen because I want to help troops and their families. And sometimes I feel like maybe you're trying to hold me back. Maybe you don't like this new version. And maybe I'm trying to be something different or something new. I, I don't think we should just go back and always want to be live the glory days of being the Sergeant Major Army. Yeah. And I think the new job deserves uh, a new version of me, and I want to be that new version. Like, don't put that label on me. I'm, I'm more than just that. Yeah, You're I'm allowed sorry. to be Tony. Tony, the CEO of this. Tony, the director of that. I like that. That's awesome. Last question. What's something or a couple things, uh, if you can't narrow it down to one thing, about AER, the, the organization itself or the work that you guys do or some things that you've seen that in the military realm, like from, from active duty or reservists and National Guard, that they just don't see, they don't understand, they don't get, or they misconstrue. So something that's like, this is not true. Like, <laughs> yeah. stop thinking that. You know, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's usually all about the money. Uh, it's <laughs> like, oh, uh, you get appropriated funds. Actually, we don't. It's all donations. Um, 100%. Yeah, it's 100%. 100% donations. My next favorite is you only do loans. You don't do grants. And believe it or not, we do uh, about $50 million in loans, but we also do $21 million in grants. And uh, my third favorite one is if I give you a loan, I actually need the money. <laughs> so it's like, it's like uh, that uh, if I give you a loan, well, you're going to pay it back. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so not always true. Uh, that's <laughs> everyone. Um, but number two is like, if I give you money to loan you money, I actually need money to have yeah. that. So it does come back. Uh, but there's a lot of rumors about money and things like that. It's just 90% 90, 90 just aren't true. Okay, so Tony, before we go, I'm personally going to donate $100 to AAR. Is there any any other way that we can donate to AAR? My favorite one is actually the website, armyrelief.org, just one big word, donate. And the other day, uh, I won some money and I donated it right back to AAR. <laughs> so That's it awesome. really only took like a minute. Um, but you can send a donation. We'd prefer that not to go, but you can actually send the donation right to the headquarters. The QR code takes you to the website. So right. our preferred course of action is through the website, but we do take cash you know, to your AROs uh, that has to be documented. And uh, you can send checks to the headquarters in cash, but again, just to keep it clean and a good accountability of mm -hmm. where the money is, we yeah. prefer the website. Awesome. Here's my donation right here on the screen. Make sure you guys go and donate. It's okay to ask for help. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what your circumstances, we've all been there, or maybe you haven't been there, you're gonna experience something like this to where you're gonna to need to reach out a hand and, and ask for help. So uh, please go and donate, subscribe, leave some comments, let me know if you want me to ask Tony something later down the road, but I appreciate your time, and, and sir, I appreciate your time. So. Tony. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>